Welcome to the wide world of esports, a show devoted to all things esports. I'm your host, Catherine Knorr. Today we're talking with Jordan Deco about his journey from gamer to esports entrepreneur. Jordan's company is Sports Made Digital. Welcome, Jordan. Catherine, how are you? Great. It's a wonderful Thanksgiving Eve. And uh, we'll start off with uh, a question that many of our viewers would want to know is, Tell us about when you started playing video games and what games uh, you played or play. So, so um, I started playing video games with the Nintendo 64. It was um, like the, the classic games were Super Smash Brothers and, Le and uh, Legend of Zelda. Super Smash Brothers, the, like, the, that was the game that I met kind of like my first group of friends in, in, in elementary school. And so, you know, that was like the first time I a, met friends and, and B just kind of trash talked against each other. So that's the trash talk kind of started when I was very younger. And then I kind of dabbled into adventure games and different type of games. But um, yeah, yeah, that's what that's what I started with. And then so when it comes to competitive games now, I play StarCraft 2 and Warcraft 3 Reforged. Um, and then I've recently started getting into uh, World of Warcraft with the new Shadowlands up uh, pat or expansion. So I've been doing a little bit a lot. Okay, fantastic. And yeah. then you ultimately um, started uh, Sports Made Digital. Tell us about what led you um, to start that company. So what happened was um, I was actually, I was involved with, um, I guess, character design and, and excuse me, and asset design. Um, which was more on the development side. And this is kind of just my aha moment of sticking to what I, what I was good at. And so I, you know, I got fed up with trying to do things that I really liked, but really wasn't, um, I, it's not that I wasn't interested in it, but I was just, I was just struggling and killing myself to um, kind of get started. And so I, and so I kind of had like my aha epiphany moment of saying, Hey, let's, you know, let's, you know, just, you know, despite what it is, let's stick to what we're good at, which is writing um, and, and communicating. And so because I have like a, because I have a very entrepreneurial mindset, I started um, Sports Made Digital, which is a marketing company where I build, uh, where, where it's a content marketing company where I write blog articles and do sales copy for companies who are just starting out or need to improve their, um, their coverage on who they are as a company. And I would imagine that there are a lot of um, companies that don't have time or they don't have the competency or skill to do that kind of work. Is that right? That's correct. Um, I mean, I think with, t uh, with because we're at the tail end of 2020, we're actually the very end of 2020. I think it's now catching on like a decade later of, of where um, the internet was born to now, I think we're now finally catching on to where companies are appreciating it, but don't, but like you said, don't necessarily have the time or the competency um, to um, kind of do it themselves. And, and, you know, creating content might seem very small, but have, you know, reaching out to your audience in a, in a very organic way is, is kind of how you build a company nowadays. Sure. And, you know, there are so many things to do when you're working with your company, there's financial issues, there's so many um, aspects of it. And so you, it so sounds like uh, you allow them to delegate uh, that very important um, social media and marketing part. Is that right? That's correct. So I, so what I do is I, I um, pitch myself as somebody who can take over those services and um, kind of take one thing off of their plate that uh, that's very important to a business, but, you know, I think when it comes to, um, I don't know if it's, I guess I can't speak for other companies, but when it comes to a pro, you know, a priority thing, maybe it's not as high, it, it, it hasn't been as high of a priority as it has been, uh, lately. Sure. And so you have a background playing baseball, is that right? That's correct. So I, um, I mean, background as in I played little league and then <laughs> and then several other sports up until uh, up until high school but um, kind of my road into sports and enjoying sports is uh, I actually had a pretty tragic but and now inspiring background of 
So I was diagnosed with herpes and cephalitis at, at six months old. And so to cut, um, maybe not cut the short story, but uh, I was, I, that kind of threw me into an coma and, and I woke up obviously uh, with my left side paralyzed. And so it was a great idea, as you can imagine, for me to play sports at, um, in addition to taking physical therapy. So that's, that's kind of my attachment and my, uh, rom you know, that's how I romanticize sports is like, it, it, it gave me my mobility back and um, I really don't want to think where I would be without sports. Um, and so on more of a mental side, um, video games has helped me, helped me with that as well. So I can kind of point to StarCraft and WarCraft 3 as ways how um, video games ha have helped me and my brain um, kind of develop on my own. Okay, so um, you started your business during the pandemic, is that right? That's correct, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> how has that been? You know what, it's, um, it's been it, it's been great. I've seen a lot of early success, um, and there's definitely companies and opportunities for people to get out for me for me to you know build build my clientele. Um, and I think people are just trying to uh, manage and, and kind of strategize how you know how you reach out to um, you know customers nowadays. I think uh, at, at least we're we're technically in the in the second lockdown right now, but I think early on into the pandemic, people were really scared of, you know, how do they reach out to um, customers? And so that's that kind of what leads me into why making content is so important is because, um, I mean, you won't have the opportunity to uh, kind of do some on-site marketing. So uh, making podcasts, making YouTube videos like this, and, um, and, and, and just having, having digital marketing in general is kind of the way that um, business businesses should be looking to uh, grow their grow their audience. And so, what kind of businesses do you um, work with? So right now, um, I work with an e I work with an esports company that does, that that in Selma, Alabama, that's building a team and does e ha to, uh, hosts an esports lounge and an esports arena. And so, what they're trying to do is kind of grow out the um the esports uh, awareness or esports scene in um in Alabama and and more so the south so um there's a lot of resources down there that uh a lot of resources and a lot of attention down there that um kind of just need an extra push for people to be committed to esports um and then i'm i've been working with um other smaller businesses that are that are actually very interesting so i'll i'll just share another one i'm working with um esports circus which provides um, a remote location for uh, schools to compete against each other. And so that kind of takes away of the risk from vandalism and, and theft. And then um, they also supply higher quality or high quality equipment for, for students to play, uh, play with. So um, that one is, is pretty, both of those are pretty, um, pretty interesting opportunities. So who are your ideal customers? Um, so ideal customers are uh, about like 18 to 34 startups, um, kind of the companies I'm working with now. Um, some of them have been kind of out of that demographic uh, in terms of age, but I'm, I'm just working with, um, with start startup companies. So um, anybody who, and that's where kind of brand awareness is a, is a major factor, is uh, putting out consistent content on a schedule. Um, where that is, uh, well, well, where that's important, where they can start building um, awareness with with their target audience. And so, um, what are some of the strategies that you're using to connect with the community? Yeah, so I've, um, I mean, as a gamer, I've been, I've been, um, kind, of, I've, I've been using Discord, and and Discord, for those of you who don't know, is a um, is now is now a competitor to Slack because they're expanding their market base. But it's been um, an adaptation of Teamspeak back in the day. But it allows you to um, chat on, on many different uh, servers and and channels for people to uh, really, uh, I guess, 
bond and communicate with, with the community. Um, and so I've been using Discord, Facebook, uh, Twitter, and LinkedIn. And so um, I know we met through Facebook. And, and so I've been producing a lot of content on Facebook and LinkedIn in particular. Sure. And we met on Facebook groups. And right. I think I, I actually have found Facebook groups and LinkedIn groups to be quite valuable in terms of connecting with people. Um, what about Instagram? I don't think you mentioned Instagram. I am building out my Instagram audience. Um, I mean, the way I, the way I've kind of started looking at it, because at the, because on one hand, I am trying to focus on more, I guess, written content, um, and so that's where Twitter and LinkedIn comes in. Is that you can't? Is that that's more so written content, and that and that performs well. Um, Instagram content, um, you can you can post videos and uh, and pictures, obviously, but. I haven't, uh, I'm just starting my Instagram growth right now. So I'm planning to get on all three, but I've focused on more, um, more content, more written content um, than, than uh, visual content for right now. Sure. And, you know, I kind of am in the same boat as you. I'm not as heavy in Instagram, but mm -hmm. in the others. Um, what about Twitter? Twitter, uh, Twitter, I've, I've started using Twitter um, more recently. And so what, what kind of my in-depth strategy is, is I go into, let's say, uh, and, well, now let's say, I've been going into hashtag esports. So what I do is get into, get into hashtag esports and then you see all the comments or posts within that, um, with that, within that feed. And then you jump into uh, conversations and, and try to provide value that way. So um, I think I think with Facebook, well, like, Again, with face, it's similar to Facebook, where uh, once you start providing content and value for people, then you can kind of jump into um, other people's conversations and say, "Hey, like this is, you know, say I think I've actually spoken with a couple teams on Twitter where they said where they where they were looking for companies, not companies, where they were looking for team acquisition, and um, I just said, "Hey, that's great. Uh, this is something I can do for you." And then that the conversation kind of stems from there. So it's really just about um, recognizing recognizing what they like what they bring to the table and see how you can kind of add value to that. But uh, Catherine, it, it's it, if you can kind of like it's it's kind of the same strategy on all on all different platforms. It's just um, it's the same it's the same strategy, and yet at the same time you have to do it differently for each strat for each platform. Sure. Right. I, I would agree with that. And if you look at um, hashtag esports, you'll always find um, links to my shows. Absolutely. <laughs> you probably you probably have. Yes, I um, have. <laughs> um, so uh, where do you see the most value in esports? So I think a lot. Um, so I think where the uh, where esports can grow is within the collegiate level and and e-learning level. So um, and and really just at like providing value in other ways than just focusing on um, on teams and competition because that is you know I think that's something that you can obviously make your money on but I think if we're talking about the growth of the industry um, like collegiate competitions um, e-learning um, kind of just at, you know education education, I guess providing education and different and expanding the different ways you can get into esports is where I think it's going to grow. And, and I think if um, kids and consumers are, are aware of the different ways you can get into it that aren't necessarily leading towards um, needing to be a professional gamer, because honestly, that's as uh, difficult and as rare, rare, rare as an opportunity as it is in traditional sports. So. Um, I think to be realistic with um, with what you want to do, um, I think that's something that that needs to be talked about. Is um, it's just the different avenues you can you can go down in esports because it's not just all um, it's not just uh, competition. Sure. Mm -hmm. So, is it better to start your own company where you're working for yourself and you're doing something that you love? Or would you rather work for someone else? Um, I would rather work for myself. Um, I, I mean, I, I guess obviously one um, because um, 
like I, I've, I've also the funny thing about my company is it's not like this isn't my first project and that's what I think something uh, that's what I think is a good um, subject to talk about it's like with most entrepreneurial ventures it like for me my interests have changed like as I've gotten older but it's always been something I've, I've actually we've, we've been talking about I talked you know we spoke uh, before we went on um, that I went to a uh, software engineering boot camp because I wanted to be a video game developer. Uh, that touched more so on general development, uh, but that also stemmed from learning how to do, learn, but before I went to that boot camp, I learned how to uh, code video games on my own with like with tutorials and YouTube. And frankly, that's just how I learned. So I think the way I learn um, has led to, you know, I guess more so of an entrepreneur of an entrepreneurial mindset. Uh, but you know, but I think for people who don't, you know, don't see themselves as that is, you know, on, you know, entrepreneurship can be used as an opportunity for you um, to open your own doors to maybe grab the attention of of a of a bigger company. And so it's all about uh, nowadays just proving your worth, uh, proving your worth kind of upfront rather than going through the um, well, I mean, I was going to say college, but you know, people people study uh, get their edu education differently. Uh, but what I'm trying to say is, it's like there's no one way to get to get your education, and there's no one way to get exposure. So what I'm saying is, like, is if entrepreneurship is what you enjoy, definitely definitely go for it because um, it, it it is a risk, but at the same time, it it, it opens up a lot of doors for you to kind of either work for yourself or for a company to recognize um, your work and for, for a company to recognize your work and hire you. So I think it can be used for, for you know, for those two ways is either work for yourself or for, to use it as a springboard into something else. Sure. And, and what is your, what's the best thing about uh, owning your own business in esports? I think one, I get to let, I get to do, I get to do something I love every day. Um, that's something that my dad taught me very early on. And so I've taken that with me, um, you know, my entire life up, up until now. So I've been trying, I mean, um, if it, you know, if you, I've been trying different things um, and kind of had like a, you know, if I wasn't doing entrepreneurship, I, you know, I would, I would have a slower progression to my career, but um, I think trying different things and tasting what you enjoy doing is um, is great. So I think this is a career. I think I think working in esports, and particularly, um, it's always changing. Um, video, like it's always changing. I'm involved in sports, um, and that you know it, it impacts marketing in particularly because um, you know at, at every company now is trying to transition to um, is trying to you know improve their a digital marketing uh, strategy. So I think from twenty from from now on, uh, digital marketing is going to be uh, a major focus with with companies in general. Sure, and I think it's absolutely necessary. If you, absolutely if you aren't doing that, then you're not taking advantage of the uh, of markets. Sure. Um, sure. There is a question from a viewer. Um, does your company have to keep up with all the current trends? Um, uh, and then the second question is, do you have any thoughts about Twitch suddenly taking down a ton of videos because of music copyright? Oh, I want to tackle that, that the second one first. Um, okay. So I read an hour. I, 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 so we're talking about uh, the DMCA strike, which is barbaric, I think. Um, it, because, uh, how should I say? Um, I guess the strategy that they took were just slashing at like all slashing all copyrighted music. I, I don't think that's a good strategy. I really think that be a partnership between Twitch and Spotify where music artists get royalties from there, not only Spotify. This is actually something I, th I thought in my head where if there can be a partnership between Twitch and Spotify where the music, the music artists get use Twitch as an extra source of revenue, I think that would be a much more, if, if pragmatic, I'm, I'm gonna say pragmatic, I think that's a much more reasonable solution than just slashing all all music 
to get all together. And so when, when I heard about Music Cat Gold, which this is just kind of like a, a caveat, uh, an extra layer to the DMCA strike is Monster Cat Gold has is a subscription-based ser- uh, service where you can pay, I think it's $5 a month to listen to a non-copyrighted uh, music library. But you can also just jump straight, you can jump from like a brand new streamer, zero, uh, no, zero followers to affiliate status, which is where you can monetize your stream. Um, which I just think that cuts out the hard work for streamers to kind of f- to kind of get that reward that that reward of you know putting that hard work in and becoming and becoming affiliate because I know for me that started I I was a streamer beginning to mid middle of of this month or the, of this year excuse me um, and it took me about four months to get get to it so even though you know four months isn't isn't a long time that's still four months that's still that's still you know you, you still have to put in work so. Um, I just don't think Twitch is going about, I guess, the DMCA non-copyrighted music the right way. Um, mm-hmm. and, and, I, and so I think the second, the, the first question was, because I did this in, in revert, I did this backwards. Um, do Does your company have to keep up with all the current trends? Yes. Um, I think because, um, especially because I work in marketing, I need to, I, I'll use, I guess, I'll use myself, for example. Um, I need to be aware of all different ways to communicate with, with, with my target audience and just audiences in general. So right now, now, right now I'm on LinkedIn because it's, it's very organic. Um, the amount of, I mean, it may not seem like it, but the amount of content that's coming out it, um, from uh, the amount of content that's going out um, is kind of out outplaying the amount of, I guess, uh, paid content. That's not exactly how I wanted to say it, but uh, it's not as saturated is what I'm trying to say. So, mm-hmm. um, so for example, th- like LinkedIn is something that I would, I would highly suggest streamers and and businesses um, to hop on with because, like everything, that's going to be saturated at, at one point. Um, and then. In terms of like, in terms of in terms of keeping up with the news, I think that I think that's something that you should you should you should be doing at a point um, to a point because it, it's definitely given me um, content to talk about. Um, but yeah, so it's definitely given me content to talk about. So um, I think however you digest your news is 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 it's important to kind of be aware of of where the industry is going. Um, but at the same time, I also think adding your own um, point of view is is just as valuable, just as valuable, if not more valuable as well. Sure. And, you know, one of the things that they, one of my guests said that the word authenticity, um, authenticity is over talked about. And, but the bottom line is, it's true, you need to be authentic. And yeah. so it sounds to me like that voice that you have or that voice of that particular client um, and the authenticity of that voice is important in what you do. Is that right? Exactly. So when I go, so it's important for me because just, you know, outside of business, it's who I am. I'm, I'm bluntly honest to, to a fault. Um, And so that's just, that's me as a person. Um, And so sometimes, I mean, sometimes that's, that gets me in trouble, but um, I, I try to be as honest with people as possible. Um, and so being your authentic self, um, if you're not, I think, if you're not, I think many people can, can kind of see through that. So I think, excuse me. Um, I think on one hand, um, it's great to want to start a business and make money, but I think if you're coming at it from a place of authenticity and, and wanting to help people, having a higher purpose to wanting to help people, which is, which is how, why I started what I'm doing is, is a combination of knowing I'm good at writing and, and knowing that I really just want to help people. Um, that's how I want to make my impact. And so having a higher purpose to starting any business than just wanting to make money is, I think is a, you know, is a prerequisite to entrepreneurship. And that makes a lot of sense. I think people can tell when someone isn't uh, there for the right reasons or only there to make money. So I think, you know, that's terrific. Um, So um, how can people follow you and your work? 
So um, you can follow me at, uh, on LinkedIn, just Jordan Dicko. Um, I have a LinkedIn um, prof profile for Sports Made Digital. It's just at Sports Made Digital. Um, each, I guess, each letter is is cap. It, it, never mind. It's at Sports Made Digital, um, and then you can just find it through my profile. I have um, a Instagram account um, uh, that's Sports Made Digital as well, and then a Twitter account, which is um it's sports made digital but i think digital is spelled d-i-g-i-t-a-1 just because i like, just because that's how the handle played out um mm. so that's what that's where you can find me okay terrific well jordan it was great having you on and um i hope a lot of viewers are inspired by your story of uh of uh going from uh a uh, child in a coma and doing regular sports, playing games, and uh, then starting your own company. Listen, it's a uh, you know it's it's been a journey right now, but Catherine, this was excellent. All right, terrific, and thank you to our viewer who sent the questions, and thank you to our audience for joining us today. Next week, will uh, my guest will be Christopher Johnson. If you work in the esports business, you'll want to tune in because we'll be talking about esports insurance. See you then.